I remember going to clubs before and they'd like book too many bands. So I'd have just a couple bands just come back here to the house and just play here and have everybody come. So that was always a blast. This is my baby right there. <laughs> oh, wow. Little crazy bastard V. Super cool. Um, Derek Rivers, they call me Dirty Derek. Uh, I've been playing guitar and bass since I was about 15, 16. Uh, started, I think about 86. Just jamming out in the garage, my parents' house, those bands. Uh, first show I got to play, uh, I just turned 17, like, two days it was a uh, Gigi Allen that was in 89 uh, I got hooked up with him I was just a big fan since it was the most extreme thing out there and uh, it was an outrageous show uh, Club Oasis here uh, five bucks <laughs> good cheap shows we hooked up I'd call him on the phone write him letters and stuff like that one of the craziest shows ever he would break bottles on his head. Uh, the first bottle he threw out hit Ruben Luna from Hogwild. <laughs> uh, carve up his chest, the balls. He set his pubic hair on fire. All the stuff Tony was telling me. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so it was, it was awesome. That, 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 got, that was my start. I had a band called Gods of Gore for a while. Uh, did a band shit with, with Beer and Danny and uh, Bobo and Hob for Danny. 13 years. He's on the on the oh, interview. Yeah, Lubin. Yeah. Okay. So it's, uh, Satan's Goat did some black metal with beer. We, we started that. Uh, uh, now I'm doing a Lasanche uh, with uh, my friend Yorn. He used to play in Necrovore back in the in the 80s. Uh, we did Hod all together, and then everybody splits up and does other projects. So we've been doing that. Uh, we also play with Bloodstorm. That's out of Philadelphia. Do, just doing like festivals with them. I still got a punk band with some of my friends, and my son plays in that one too. He's 21 now. They're called uh, DSFA. Doesn't stand for anything. <laughs>
uh, help the band set up and then run back to the door and hope nobody stole the money. <laughs> um, when when we first when I first started out in it in the early '90s, uh, it was very cold. It was very violent and very mean. And uh, I think it's real welcoming now. To be honest with you, it's real welcoming and open. But I kind of miss the old days too. I mean, there was uh, you know not just anybody was allowed to come and see shows. You know, and come out. I mean, you can even just, you can even go to certain shows. You weren't allowed to. You know what I mean? You know, you got to take your licks first, and you know, and that's it's. I mean, I miss it in a way. You know, there's some you know child walking around wearing you know a T-shirt that you know <laughs> that's older. Yeah, he got on the internet at the show telling me he's an expert about the show that I was at 20 years ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a lot rougher back then. And, uh, you know, you know, I'm not going to say, like, oh, I missed the violence and all that or, you know, any of the craziness. But, I mean, we, um, you know, there, it was a different time and I missed the fact that you had to fight to be part of something. As legend has it, was the G.D. Allen show, like, the craziest show there or would you say there was something crazier? Yeah, that was definitely the craziest show there, the wildest show there. I mean, I'd seen other shows he had done where he did stuff like, you know, breaking bottles over his head and pulling his pants down, setting his pubic hairs on fire. But all the stuff he was uh, known for, notorious for, like, you know, uh, deprecating on stage and eating it and <laughs> smearing it on people, throwing it at people, and then grabbing girls and trying to drag them on stage and um, getting in fights. All of that happened at that one time. He would tear up some clubs pretty bad, like that DMZ one, that was like a riot there. But it, it was outside of the stage, he was really cool to hang out with. He would just have like stories to tell, like crazy stories that he's done. Somehow I end up on a pile of people falling over the stage. <laughs> I mean, that was, it was kind of fun, thinking, looking back. It was, yeah, it was kind of a little scary. I mean, we had, I was kind of smart to where I go, I'm not going to rent my, I'm not going to have that show at my place. So I got somebody else to have it at my place and have them be responsible for any of the damages. And I kind of had a feeling it was going to happen. When I saw him walking over across the street to go eat at Mucho Taco, I go, uh-oh, it's going to happen. <laughs> What does Mucho Taco make people angry or what? Oh, oh, yeah, I have delicious, greasy Mexican food and yeah. Something about San Antonio, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I know I got put in jail for a while and I'd just ride him in prison a whole lot too. Uh, I got t-shirts he would draw for me. I'd send him like 20 bucks for commissary and he'd just get white shirts and he'd just draw on them and send them to me. I saw him in Austin one time where the cops raided the place and they threw tear gas in there and arrested him. <laughs> that was crazy. That like was crazy. Club, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. I was hanging out partying with them backstage and all he'd have was a trench coat on, his cowboy boots, and a freaking turkey baster in his pocket. I was like, dude, what the hell is that for? He's like, dude, I'm going to fill it up with beer and stick it on my ass and just shit all over the place. And he did. <laughs> There's one thing I miss is the danger of shows that's not like that anymore.